Kato. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Kato. That's what Junkie Dave's theme song says about me anyway. I don't claim to be any different than that. And I'm here with my buddy, Rudy of Rudy Zizu's Science Fantasy. Watch him, I call it. You know, I always, <laughs> let me tell you what, I always forget or I get tongue tied. I can't remember if it's experience or experiment. Experience. That's what I, I'm here with Rudy Zizu of Rudy Zizu's <laughs> Fantasy experience, and uh, I don't know why I ever thought it was experiment. That doesn't even make sense. And we are the last home stretch of the toys, figures, robots, virtual convention. We're it. We're the swan song of the night. And it was a convention put together by Rudy himself. I was invited to take part in it as well as Many others, if you haven't uh, been keeping up all day, there's a go to my Instagram. There's a list of all the channels that were involved, and you can check them all out. How you been doing, Rudy? Uh, very well. Very well, indeed. <clears throat> there is also a playlist on ah, my channel of there you go. all 21 videos. 21 uh, include, videos. Yeah. Obviously, one of them is literally a, a four-minute introduction by myself, but then there's another 20 or 19 to this one is like the 20th. Yeah. I think your intro oh, for, live show. For, me, for me, your intro aired at like 8 AM. Yep. That's right. And then it's been going all day and we're, we're it. So it's, it's like what? 11 o'clock there. It is 11 PM kicking it. Thanks everyone for coming in. I, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to everyone that showed up early here. Ninja Bill, Magnum, Raziel, Memo. Oh, man. Uh, good grief. Hey, Rudy's in chat. Um, Ultra Marcus, Excelion, XLR. I hope I said that right. Lecky, been waiting on you. And Dragonfly, Waltimus, MC DJ. My goodness gracious. Lone Dragon, Dragonfly. Jason Krishner, thanks you everyone. Thanks everyone for coming in. I will try to keep saying thank you. Crankcase, thanks for coming in. Uh, so yeah, definitely go to Rudy's channel. I believe I put the link in the bio. If not, just search for Rudy Zizu Science Fantasy, and um, you you will get all the twenty one videos that were that were there uh, today. So awesome. So how do you, how do you think the day went? Incredible. It's um, surpassed what I even thought it would do you know it's this is the third one that we've done i didn't think that um it would become a trilogy you know back last year we did bots at home and we followed it up with blast from the past and then obviously we've got toys figures and robots but, but then again i didn't think that the uk would go into another lockdown and with this lockdown it, we don't have an end date so for everyone's mental well-being for our, every, every content creator and for all you guys that watch us, it's um it's been a huge success. We've had so many comments, people have gained subscribers, and it's an eclectic day full of not just toys, there's vlogs and there's people that you have seen before, other people that you haven't, and then content creators have done things slightly different this time. If I, uh, I take Borders Dude, for example, he's done a documentary style video which is new for him uh ben's collectibles has flipped usually you just see his hands but no he's come in front of the camera <laughs> um i've done a very stripped back attempt you know i've removed like i usually sit in a certain place and my head's behind my bookcase or behind my toys but i've done like just a white background and made it about me and just the toy we've we've done some really cool things today we've done like game shows and People have looked at G1, Transformers, GoBots, action figures, Kaiju. It's it's incredible. Uh, I always need to say this when I see this come up. Russ has the best G1 collection. His G1 collection is absolutely absurd, and everyone should be jealous of that for sure. Um, <clears throat> one of my favorite moments from today's was uh, watching uh, Zort Rider, uh, his... his uh, question and answer 
um, this morning. Well, this morning for me, uh, when he asked, you know, all the different, a few different other reviewers and YouTubers, a few questions. And there was, I'm not going to get the uh, picture of a Borders dude in a frog suit out of my head. <laughs> it is stuck there forever. Yeah. That so, yeah, so the cool. Toy of Room 101, inspired by For a game room show. Um, that, you know, it started, that so, that Room 101, the, the premise of that started in the 90s for celebrities to dump certain things that they didn't like. And it's it's still a show that's going today. So when Zort Rider explained what he was doing, I was just like, that is such a good idea. And it is it is what you'd expect to see at a convention. You know, we can't, we're in lockdown. You know, we we can't meet each other. We can't go toy hunting we can't do anything <laughs> so we are bringing yeah, it to uh, you guys I'm, how um how before we get further into that you are you doing all right you and your family are good to go everybody's healthy and safe yes um we're all healthy uh, we've been tested um we have support bubbles so i go my support bubble it's my mum. my mum lives on her own so we get to spend time with her and then um, my wife's family there that's her support bubble so we we have two bits that we can we can see um i've gone through various furlough statuses so i've been unfurloughed i've been furloughed i've been flexi furloughed i've been back full time i've been back part time i've worked from home that that's been quite crazy at times but um the free amount of time has allowed me to get all the artwork done and spend time with my family and enjoy toys um i've got toys out of storage that i haven't played with for a few years and i've i've really embraced having time away forced time away right well one one thing um you know a lot of folks one one or more parents don't get the they don't always get the joy of spending like as much time with their newborns as you've gotten to do so that's kind of a I would think kind of a blessing in disguise if there's going to be a positive part of it is like not being away from home or, and I don't, I don't know if you work from home or why that doesn't really make a difference, but just being able, at least you've been able to be around the kiddos and the wife. Oh yeah. Every, like pretty much life. every day of uh, the various kind of, however it's months and months, but when, when I was furloughed, I was furloughed. I was literally had all day to spend with my twins. I've got to see them grow up. I have barely missed anything. So it's, it's, it's something that never would have happened. I could have taken a sabbatical from work, but they're unpaid and they're only three months. But um, yeah, it's incredible to see my children grow up right in front of my eyes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's irreplaceable. That's not something that happens as often nowadays as it did, you know, back in the day where one or both parents could be around the kid at such a young age constantly and that's going to make a difference later on it absolutely will so I, I do you know what's cool. super exciting is that yesterday somebody donated two playmobil toys a rocket ship and a recycling garbage truck and they haven't put them down and i love playmobil um so it, it's incredible to see them interact with toys at this young age I cannot yeah. wait to some see what the, the next few stuff. years. Yeah. Some of the Playmo Playmobil stuff is pretty awesome. Like I love the Playmobil Ghostbusters. All right. I'll so yeah, I've, I've got Ecto-1. It's, it's it's one hell of a toy. Yeah. But great great looking toy. Doesn't look Playmobilish. It looks really good. So you sent some a, a sort of our itinerary. And the only reason we did that this time is because you and I <laughs> tend to I mean, we just spent 10 minutes talking about absolutely nothing that we were going to talk about, but that's okay. Yeah. Because you and I have a bad habit, a good habit, a habit of going, hey, we're going to talk about this today. And then it just veers into whatever. So you sent me some homework. And the first thing we want to talk about, since, since we, we already did talk about the, the event, which was phenomenal, go back and watch all 21 videos. Um any new pickups? Have you, is there anything new that you want to show the fine folks in the chat and the three or four that may watch this afterward? I certainly do. 
because I have picked up this is my first like new toy since I'm thinking maybe the start of December so I, I've been pretty dry of toys I've been kind of prote slightly protecting my money um, and kind of just waiting I put in I think something like six pre-orders last year and uh, this is the first one to come in and we have got let some glare we have got the Doctor Doom uh, Fantastic Four done in the comic book kind of style so I am not the biggest Fantastic Four fan but I am one hell of a Spider-Man and his amazing friends fan so I am making it my mission this year to create a Spider-Man and his amazing friends shelf all because at Hascon last year they revealed that they are doing a Marvel Legend Firestar. Yes. Something that I didn't think would happen. So I am going to build up. Um, so I'm going to get some sort of Spider Man. Um, Firestar. There's an X Men Iceman that I kind of I wouldn't mind getting as that. And I want to get like maybe two villains. So Doctor Doom, because he, he features in like five episodes of Spider Man and one episode of Spider Man and his amazing friends. But he's a key villain to me in Spider-Man and the Green Goblin. And then I'm going to hope that they re-release a Sandman because they never did before and it was a builder figure. And if you want to buy him, he's like 100, 120 pounds to buy, you know, because he's, he's a little bit rarer. He's a little bit older and I, I can't justify that. Um, so hopefully. And of course there's a, there's a great Mysterio figure out there that's, Somewhat hard to find, but is a fantastic figure. But this this is like, like ridiculous. This is exactly what I want from an action figure. It looks just like he does on the screen. Like he's yeah, when you showed me, when you showed me that earlier, I was like, is that the toy biz? Is that toy biz? Yeah, it just it beautifully homages toy biz of the nineties. Uh, Lone it's Dragon like, asks, "Is there an Aunt May fig? I think there is one coming. There's a cartoon, uh, a, a Spider Spider Man and his amazing friends, Aunt May, and uh spider-man one of them comes with miss lion is it spider-man firestar comes with miss lion that's firestar. the deal break that's the deal yeah. breaker obviously yeah. firestar comes with miss everyone lion. needs a miss lion action figure in their collection yeah. but yeah that yeah. that's my plan for the year to build up this shelf then you then what you know what you need you need to get someone who can make a diorama or you can make a diorama of the living room uh as the base you know you with the incredible everyone, hulk with, yeah picture yeah. yeah oh that would be so good that would be so good so yeah uh, so that's one pickup you have anything else that is it at the moment um i am i'm gonna order something tomorrow because i've sold some of some of the toys and some of my warhammer customs so i've kind of got some extra extra spare change for toys um and i do believe my friend zort rider and fellow content creator has sent me something in the post uh -huh. so i'm excited to I see what that is a mystery gift that's always fun i love i love the, the mystery gifts i got a couple of things uh i got uh today i guess today is the day of getting things in pairs i picked up magic squares tiny little uh i, I thanks to my buddy inu tabi who convinced me to get these by me watching his video Tiny little Magic Square Stunicons, little tiny combiner I'm looking forward to. These things look phenomenal. Just posted that review earlier today. And the only other thing that also showed up was the Punch Counterpunch set. That, and the Barricade. The, what do they call that thing? Galactic Odyssey Collection Dominus Criminal Pursuit. I am not typing that uh, into <laughs> the review title. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be barricade and punch counter punch review. So yeah, that that's uh, that's my newest pickups. Uh, was the the little tiny stunted stunticons and the Transformers War for Cybertron trilogy Galactic Odyssey collection Dominus Criminal Pursuit. That's, that's too long. That's way ridiculous. too long. <laughs> they do not think about reviewers when they title these things. <laughs> We only have a hundred characters that we can put in the title, but they look really good. Uh, you looked at it a second ago, and you said that the um, 
differences between punch counterpunch that you have, the original or the power of the primes. He's a lighter blue and more orange. This one is darker blue and yellow. Does that seem about right? It is, yes. And I was saying that that's the last um, mainline transformer I bought. So it's been a good, what is that? A year and a half? No, it's going to um, be two years. So I'm super excited to, to get a new mainline transformer and I have one pre ordered. What do you got? Let's talk about that. Uh, that was another topic. Great segue. Segue. Yeah, great segue. So I have got Sandstorm pre ordered. But I have ah. no idea when it's hit in the UK. I know that a few of you guys have got it in the US. I know uh, Deluxe has got it and Patriot Prime. Right. And I'm, I'm trying not to watch reviews because I kind of want to just embrace it for myself. Yeah, I. I it's, it's been, it, it, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I like, it's been, as I said, it's been a good year and a half since I've had a Transformer that's not G1. Yeah, I think uh, we talked about that, or I talked about that in a different stream. Um, if, if we watch other reviewers before, if it's something that we're getting in and going to review, do you watch other reviewers? And in most cases, I don't. I try to wait. Um, yeah, I will, I will typically, we have a tradition between the rejected cons. We, we typically will... If it's something we know we're going to get and going to review, we'll go in, we'll hit like, we'll leave some emoji comment just to say we were there and then back out before anything happens. We, <laughs> we keep the opinion neutral. Um, but sometimes I slip up and I just, I'm as curious as anybody else. I love, uh, I love seeing, I, I'll, I watch many reviews on uh, the same, same product. So you've got the, um, Sandstorm pre-ordered. What else you got pre-ordered? Um, I mentioned Firestar. Um, are we going to do our joint segue? No, are we going to do a segue into our joint pre-order? Uh, or do we want to save that? Let's see. Let, let's let's do what I have pre-ordered. Should be coming in in the next couple of days. Is Mastermind Creations? What the heck is the name? Optus Pexus. Some stupid name. But it's their Orion packs, their IDW Orion packs. Really looking for it's the one that's got like all the crazy articulation. You know, they kept showing pictures of it where he's doubled over, touching his toes. That looks phenomenal. Uh, got some other stuff. I have their Star Star Convoy pre-ordered. Oh, um, I remember. I've got um, Boba Fett pre-ordered, oh, and that's not coming out till April, I think. The Return of the Jedi colored one. Yeah, the one with the flame bit. Again, it's been a long time since I had a, a Star Wars figure, so that's super exciting. I, I got to stop. I can't go down that rabbit hole because I, I would easily get a lot of the Mandalorian figures because that's it's they're just great, great characters. Um, I don't think I've got other stuff pre-ordered, but I don't remember what. So now I, say, I, I, I always forget what I've got pre-ordered, and then I've got like a pre-order list and I've got like a wish list, and I, yes. I must not mix up the two. <laughs> Oh no. And and now I mean we can go into our joint pre-order. We were uh, cuz I made a post yesterday on my Instagram, Kato's collection on Instagram, shameless plug. Uh Rudy Tizu on Instagram, shameless plug. Um and we we both pre-ordered this same outstanding looking figure. And you could you could tell the folks what it is. So it is the Valiverse uh Sergeant Slaughter. So yeah, Action Force is back. It is seven inches, seven and a half inches, and it, it looks ridiculous. That chin, they nailed the it. The chin, the power, like of the, the body chin. sculpt, the like the color. It's it just, it's like a perfect update. It's like it, it's not too much like you know, the eight is. I don't need a carbon copy made bigger. What I want is is this. Yeah, it looks so good. I was, I actually was watching Bobby Valla was on uh, GI Joe Berg, another great channel uh, with a group of guys that do pretty much nothing but GI Joe. They know their stuff way more than I will. And Bobby Valla was on there. Uh, he was talking about um, all the different figures, uh, Steel Brigade. Basically, the story is Bobby Valla 
he got the license to the term Action Force, which some folks in the audience might know is the UK version of what G.I. Joe was. If I, I don't overstate, I think that's pretty pretty much the sum of it. And he got the rights to the name Action Force, got the rights to a couple of uh, Action Force characters, character names. And then the big surprise quite a few months ago, I think October or November, is that he got the rights for Sergeant Slaughter's figure. And one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. And one of my favorite Joe characters of all time. So I was not going to miss out on that. There you go. Nice. That's, there we go. Show the folks. Hit me full screen. Oh, my gosh. Can that. You, I can hear that picture. Yeah. Oh. And it I, looks like I you can... Him. Go ahead. No, it looks like you can pose him just ridiculously well. He's, he's chonk. He's great. chonky. Yeah. And you know what? You know what Bobby Valla has done that... G.I. Joe Classified and Super 7 have not done. There's a nice little figure stand in there that says Action Force. And the freaking thing has a figure stand. It That should be standard. Standard, absolutely. Yeah. The crazy thing is, it's not absurdly priced. You know, you, you, you Super 7, great product. And not, not coming down on Super 7, fantastic product. Uh, we'll probably talk a little bit more about them later. Fifty bucks for Thundercats. All their yeah. ultimate lines is fifty bucks. It's expensive for a six or seven inch figure, but not over the moon expensive, right? It's not eighty sh figure arts money. It's not you know over the over the top. Valiver stuff, thirty bucks. Great figures, great accessories. They have accessory packs for like fifteen bucks. It's he's just a he seems very fairly marketed, so there's a solid chance that I may be out on GI Joe classified <laughs> and be completely in on Valiverse because his stuff looks really good and he genuinely cares about the product. And this was a labor of love for him. Um, he worked his butt off to make this crowdfunding thing happen. So yeah, I'm like uh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm absolutely hooked on getting like seven inch figures. It would seem. I don't get me wrong. I love five inch figures. I love Marvel Legends and the Black Series. They're all around the six inch figure size. But there's just a couple of companies that do seven, and they they tower. They tower over so many other yeah. figures, and they've just got huge shelf presence as well as being fun to play with. Yeah, it's you, can, six -inch figures you, can, you don't have to be delicate with them. Six inch figures are great, but if you don't think that extra inch matters, ask your girlfriend. That's you don't, you know what I'm saying? No, seven inches, a seven inch figure towers. It makes all the difference in the world. It's uh, such a cool little, uh, cool little uh, set of figures. I'm really, really, really looking forward to more Valiver stuff. Um, then uh, we mentioned Super 7. Uh, Super 7 has been leaking stuff all week. Uh, yeah. They've leaked a massive Thunder Tank. Yeah. That is it's, it's, it's been a to topic of discussion with toy yeah, collectors that I know. For. Uh, $450 for a Thunder Tank. It's massive, though. So I get it. it. Uh, again, not I'm not spending anyone else's money. You buy whatever you want to buy. And then today, you sent me something that made me excited and that is super sevens um silver hawks which they had sort of teased in a pixel dan video last year and he pretty yeah much there's, it, there's not much information you know there's trinkets being revealed as i said like glass tumblers because they always do the for all the products they have but they then they they said in another tweet or another instagram bit they they showed a picture of the logo and then they just said expect to see figures soon yeah I, he had made like the briefest of hints when he was on pixel dan i think last year that it was a possibility but not mm. too soon uh lone dragon i'm right there with you shipwreck and sergeant slaughter my two favorite joes without a shipwreck because i had a lot of family in the navy um 
like he says, he's all in for that Thunder Tank. I may be. I don't know. It's just going to have to hit just right. Um, it, the, it's like kind of like Unicron with me. It's just going to have to be at the right moment because I had to pass on Unicron, and that hurts my feelings right now. Uh, but I, I, there's a solid chance I'm in on the the, the uh, Silver Hawks for sure. Yeah, at least uh, at least look at the cats, the main they, people. They can't reveal too much either. They don't want to reveal all their good stuff straight away. No. They're kind of eco. At there's, least, but then again, there's no t New York Toy Fair, so you know yes. when are they going to reveal stuff? This is supposed to be the last day of their reveals, but who knows? Who knows with him? He's he's liable to throw something else out there. So, I'm I'm excited for that. I can't wait to see what they do with uh, Silver Hawks. The that's just going to be a great, and I'll do like I did with uh, uh, MCDJ full line of very likely. I mean, they're going, they dipped into the, you know, they dipped pretty deep into the Thundercats cast of characters and enemies. So I would imagine um, they're going to do the same with Silverhawks, even though they may not have as, they don't have as much time. No. Yeah, I yet. reckon they'll do a full line. You know, if they're prepared to do Captain Cracker for Thundercats, I'm sure they can go all in for a core cast of yeah. Silver Hawks. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, not. I'll probably on only want to get one. I want to get yeah, the one with yeah. the guitar. Oh, my favorite! Uh, that was my favorite part of the uh, intro. Just laying back, just that's all he did with the cowboy hat. Yep, awesome. <clears throat> so the the um, oh, I'd like Super Seven to do G One Humans. Okay. That would be cool. I, I would rather somebody like NECA do it so I could spend 20 instead of 50. <laughs> um, Rexpor says uh, Mask or Brave Star. Again, I would rather somebody like NECA or somebody like that to do it so I could spend 20 instead of 50 <laughs> for sure because I can imagine that would, that would be nice. Yeah, Bluegrass. That was him. The guitar playing Silver Hawk. For sure, yeah, I, I, that's a, that's an exciting reveal for me. Like you said, they announced trinkets, cups, and nonsense, but it just shows to show they have the license, and I think mm -hmm. that's awesome. So that was uh, that was most of what the first three quarters of what we wanted to talk about. But one thing you and I always do is we always end up dipping into nostalgia and i think the last time we spoke we mostly talked about uh the 80s didn't we yeah we so, always default <laughs> default to the 80s we rarely get into the 90s and we always say we're going to do it and we don't but i've made it on mission this evening to yeah to go there are some it. fantastic nostalgic memories from the 90s i mean the 90s gave us batman the animated series X-Men the Animated Series, Spider-Man. It gave us, uh, oh, man, it gave us Swat Cats. You know, one of the best. It gave us uh, environmentally friendly programs. That's right. Captain, Captain Planet, Planet and the Planeteers, and, uh, Toxic yeah, Crusaders. Yeah. They Toxic gave us. Crusaders. One of the weirdest I was looking at Toxic. Yeah, I, I can see him. He's, he's literally just up there. You know. What, had what no figure. business being a kid's cartoon. Oh, no. Well, yes. No. And no. But yeah, they gave us all this wealth of cartoons based on 80s, um, on 18 rated R properties. Yeah. Rambo. Aliens. Predator. Rambo. Aliens, Rambo was a little bit earlier, yeah. but yeah. Robocop. And they, they gave us just incredible cartoons. And like, I, I've mentioned it before. I was as soon as 1990 hits, I'm 12 years old. And then, you know, I was still watching cartoons and then, but I was out of toys, you know, um, but I still watched cartoons um, and I still looked at toys. And I, over the past two years, I've been intrinsically picking up either a couple of retro 90s toys or getting updated versions. You'll see in one of my videos um, from the convention that I look at NECA um, aliens and I've got a space marine apone 
and I never saw those toys in the flesh. Um, I only ever saw them in catalogues, but um, I did feel like I missed out and I was going to get one as soon as I saw that they were released. Did somebody just flash up Prince Valiant? Hell yeah. Yep. I love that show. MC DJ Prince Valiant. Yeah. So, yeah. So we, we always default to the eighties because of, you know, we were our youngest at the time, but the nineties killed us. Nineties gave us Disney afternoons and, Power Rangers. Yeah, I was going to say, like, when Power Rangers oh, yeah. hit on our screens, lifelong, when, I think... Go on. Lucky you here. Lifelong, lifelong franchises came out of the 90s, so it was also the end of Saturday morning cartoons. So everything after that went to pot because we blamed Cartoon Network for that. Here in the UK, we still kind of had Saturday morning cartoons but they were interdispersed into uh, like live tv shows so they would show one episode in that live tv show across the two main channels that's how where i saw a lot of batman and the x-men and spider-man but yeah they were they were slowly dwindled away Dip it, dipping back into the 80s for half a second there's something i want to clear up from the last time we spoke because we were talking about 80s cartoons and how much i love thundercats and you mentioned that in the UK, the Trial of lion aired in between other episodes. And yeah. it surprised me because that's not how I remember it. But I recently watched the DVD, uh, the collected DVD edition, and it, it did. It even, on the DVD, it airs uh, sporadically. So Sporadically, yeah. Yeah, there's an episode and then something else between it and then another one. And that's not how I remember it as a kid, but, you know, that's... I just wanted to say you were right, and I was as wrong as I thought I would probably was to begin with. Um, so, yeah, the 90s. Uh, if you had to pick, oh, man, this, this, I want to ask this, and I don't even know how I will answer it. If you had to pick one, one standout 90s cartoon, I hate doing this because I know if you ask me tomorrow, I'm going to say a different one. But right now, <laughs> the first cartoon that comes to your mind as the biggest standout of the 90s? Uh, Batman, the animated series. It's genre-defining. It's yeah. It encapsulates everything. They managed to have the Tim Burton score. Um, it's Bruce. It's all Bruce Tim. It's, it focused on Bruce Wayne as much. It really fleshed out characters. It gave us Harley Quinn. It's uh, an untraditional art style you know it's usually black ink on white where it's not it's black and then it's matte white paint onto there it's mm -hmm. a defined look it's it looks like the 20s and 30s um it's got that noir feel to it but you know it's, it's set present day it's it's very ethereal you know there's zeppelins and there's so much good stuff in it they the way that they developed characters and they didn't just do one episode characters um a couple of characters got more storylines clayface features twice um oh, joker's heavily way. in it poison ivy's in it quite two face you get you get to see backstories and you get one as I, you get one off characters and they're they're often a lot of the the good ones i like clock king and i've mentioned it before gray ghost is my all-time mm -hmm. favorite episode so yeah batman the main series takes top spot you mentioned that it's genre defining. It's not only genre defining, it's it's DC comics television history defining because every single DC animated movie which they nail, I mean, some of the best comic book films have been the DC animated stuff. And Bruce Timm's style may alter a little bit, but for the most part, it defined how DC Comics does their did their animated stories with a few changes here and there. Like you get Ed McGinnis's art style in Batman versus Superman, Public Enemy. You get, you know, um, oh, Frank Quitley's art style later on, I think. And I forget the, the movie it was, but based on the comic artist. But overall, Bruce Timm has pretty much taken over how I've, want to see Batman on screen and it, it just absolutely nailed it. Um, let's see. 
Oh, who was it? Check with the chat. I saw a few people mention Darkwing Duck. Disney had a glorious time for was... cartoons in the nineties, and, and they took an edgier feel. If you look, think back to the eighties, you had Ducktales and Rescue Rangers, quite light hearted, light light hearted. But then you get into the nineties, and you are Darkwing Duck and Tailspin and Gargoyles. They have just a slightly darker teen element to them for sure and lone dragon brought up gargoyles that's what i was trying to find there and the thing is without batman the animated series we wouldn't, we wouldn't have gotten gargoyles because disney wanted to compete for that kind of mm -hmm. upper teen uh semi-adult animated market and eventually it's what killed gargoyles as they backed off of that later and wanted to make it all sort of friendly again later but that was, I mean, Ninja, Gargoyles was, was their answer to Batman at the time. Ninja Bill um, says Pirates of Dark Water. Um, oh my I, was late to, I was late to the party with Pirates of Dark Water. It was never on a Saturday. It was always on like a Thursday or a Friday yeah. afternoon. Um, and I was gutted I missed a lot of episodes because it, it's quite a short series. It just didn't, it never got, well, it got cancelled. But yeah, again, just darker themes and interesting Car edgy, edgier characters. Pirates of Dark Water is another one that I'd like to see someone like NECA or Super 7 pick up because they were some very cool looking characters. Uh, the colors cool characters. always and pop. They, well. yeah. yeah, they had really good toys as well. I've got um, an Ayaz. He's a, he's a fun toy, fun vintage toy to, to have. Yeah, such a cool look. Love Pirates of Dark Water. Absolutely. Um, if I didn't say Batman the Animated Series, uh, and you, depending on what day of the week you ask me, uh, I would say the X-Men Animated Series and and Spider-Man as well. Those two kind of the Fox Fox kids, uh, Marvel. They they like go hand in hand, don't they? Yeah. Yes, because the, they, the power hour, you'd have Fantastic yeah. Four, X-Men, and Spider-Man, and it's... And Iron Man. And they, they X Men the animated series took over. Uh, I, I could not wait to watch that on Saturday, um, and it was everywhere. Pizza. I remember pizza, local Pizza Hut. Uh, they used to have the arcade machines in there, but they had uh, if you ordered a pizza or two a certain pizza, you got the first three episodes of X Men the animated series on VHS. And I was like, well, we're eating pizza tonight, Dad. So we went to Pizza Hut, and I was able to get them on VHS and have you know the whole first one or two episodes on there. It took over. Absolutely great. Closest to the comic you know, book storyline. So, so yeah, good. Yeah, there, there was always an arc. It reintroduced me back into reading comics again because I, I wanted to understand why Angel became Archangel or the Angel of Death because um, I didn't know that. I always saw, saw, saw him as that funny looking blonde haired winged you know yeah pons. Um, but no then he becomes this really dark um metalized character yeah so, and they did a great job of telling comic book stories um they did they've done an animation both at the time x-men and batman they did an animation what no one at the time could seem to do in live action and that is suck it up and make superhero shows period like unapologetically this is a comic book show it's ripped right from the pages and if any movie producer out there ever stumbles upon this video stop trying so damn hard you've got decades of story just bring it to life your fans will be happy that's all you gotta do <laughs> just just take this put it on the big screen with real people we're good you don't have to reinvent the wheel uh, because I remember like they X-Men, the animated series told comic book stories in comic book fashion. You would have two or three episode story arcs, some longer than that. Then you'd have a standalone uh, story arc here and there, but seeing characters like Forge and uh, it, the, the Shyar and all these like kind of off the wall comic characters pop up was Perfect, absolutely perfect. And lo and behold, a cartoon made me made me want to read. 
without preaching at me about it. Um, let's see who else. Uh, what else we have in here? Batman, the Animaniacs, the Steven Spielberg shows, Animaniacs, Tiny Toon, Freakazoid. Those were all instant classics. Again, they kind of they harkened back to kind of the the madcap fifties and sixties, Tom and Jerry and other Warner Brother, Hanna Barbera kind of bits, and they they took like they cherry picked and just kind of made it relevant to the nineties, but still kept a lot of the anarchic comedy because that that's what sells it is the uh, I, I don't know what the right word is to. Because they're really violent. <laughs> oh sure, but well, because they, they're, they, like, they're go ahead. They 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 basically no, did what Looney Tunes did well. They were over the top cartoons that mocked celebrities that didn't even remotely need to tell a story. They could beat the crap out of each other, and it was just funny, right? Yes. Sorry, I was being yeah, in the was, chat, but yes. Oh yeah, I get lost in the chat too. It gets, it gets dead um, space. But uh, I, yeah, I've, I've mentioned this before on live streams and to yourself is with Animaniacs, you got Pinky in the Brain, but you also got Good Idea, Bad Idea, and they were my favourite parts. I would watch Animaniacs just to see if that episode would have Good Idea, Bad Idea, because they were hilarious, like really black comedy, just really. Oh severe <laughs> yeah and, idea, and not playing and really, really not for kids really not for yeah. kids maybe good idea. 14 15 year olds bad yeah. idea playing baseball with grandpa and they just show you pick up this guy and hit a, <laughs> hit a ball with him. what was it good idea play uh um to, good idea tossing a penny into the well bad mm -hmm. idea tossing your cousin penny into a well like that, that's just so twisted and hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So good. Uh, uh, Ugly Red says chicken boo. Underappreciated chicken boo is. You, you, you walk like a, was it? You, you look like a man, but you're a chicken boo. So ridiculous. Uh, they got away with so much in Animaniacs. Yes, they did. Every hello nurse joke was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. What was um, what was the one that they, they made one joke about Prince that was really adult, and I don't remember what it was. Oh, oh, yeah, it was like, did did you oh, something? I think uh, Yakko or Wacko. Yes, there you go, ugly wretch. Um, so it, he asked Dot. Um, did she have fingerprints? Or oh, did she yes. Fingerprint? And oh, that, that, that she, was, I'd forgotten that. I remember. Oh, my, it was completely terrible and yeah. still hilarious. Still hilarious. Yeah, everybody got it. Fingerprints. So dirty and hilarious. So good. And as a kid, I never even remotely. No, straight over. Uh, Lone Dragon. Good idea. Feeding stray kittens in the park. Bad idea. Feeding stray kittens in the park to a bear. <laughs> Come on, man. That is yeah. good comedy. I don't care who you are. That is great comedy. It's just if you so if good. you contrast it, like if you compare and contrast from the nineteen eighties to the nineteen nineties, it's it's two so very different eras from the theme tune to the art style to the storytelling. And yet I I can't fault either. I I just enjoy both. I think it's because yeah, I uh, I grew up with it. So you know, in some ways, the the eighties is like in some ways naive, and then the nineties is very overblown. And then you get the ones in the middle. Prince I would Valley be is remiss one, is one in the middle for sure. I would be wrong to to say you know we've talking about all about these cartoons that came out in the nineties. And I've got a room full of Transformers here, and we can't go without mentioning Transformers Beast Wars, 1996. I mean, go it was... For it. It and was you know what, before we get into Beast Wars, yeah, yeah, if we do the precursor to Beast Wars, reboot. Oh, you, reboot, for sure. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, and that was, yeah, I could not. I, that was another one I couldn't wait. It was a, it was at the yeah. time I thought great CGI, a good story, a good villain. Um, I was in it was, it was, whenever that was, was that 94, maybe 95. It had to be, it had um, to be 94. I would have been like near, near the end of high school and I was still racing home after yeah. high school to go and watch that because it was so new virtual reality you know uh, living inside a computer world it's it, it was what i was into at that time yeah it was the and, perfect you know, a perfect different for animated style like yeah really really good. i know they tried to reboot reboot not that long ago and i didn't really like it that much but no, yeah then you was, go from there right into beast wars in 96 wars, yeah. which is basically you know it was it was the newest cgi at the time which if it weren't for the great story would be very hard to watch now just because time that passed um i Again, i would love to see oh, i was gonna say i would love to see them take the same voices the same story the same everything all the audio from beast wars cartoons and have the animation team behind Siege uh, and the War for Cybertron and all that. Same, all the same voice and sounds, just new animation, and that show would still be one of the best things that's ever come on TV. I was um, late to the party again with Beast Wars. I didn't see it till 98, and the only reason I saw it was because I went to a... I guess it's a department store called Woolworths. It, it doesn't exist now. Um, and they had a, a double VHS set and you got something like eight episodes. And I was just like, it said Beast Wars Transformers. And I was just like, wow, what's this? And I literally, I just bought it. And then that was my introduction into to Beast Wars. And then I, you know, I heard the names and I was just like, wow, is this like, is this what Transformers is now? And I got a couple of episodes in and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it wasn't yeah, interested so, in getting any toys or anything um it wasn't until i watched more episodes and i saw that they were dropping g1 hints into it and then i saw primal mm -hmm. prime and uh, a repaint and i was just like i saw this in a comic book shop again that comic book shop doesn't exist anymore and i didn't buy it i saw it in like 2001 i think and i just i had the opportunity to buy it and i and i didn't and now that toy is like super rare yeah, I, I missed out on a lot of Beast Wars. I've said it before, but we, it came out in 90. I think it, I want to say and other people that know better will say it, but I'm pretty sure it started in 96. Mm -hmm. And I think it started in 96. I graduated in 94. So by 96, I was way out of the loop. You know, I had moved on. You know, I'm, I'm getting close to, I'm moving on closer to 20 years old. So I was above it. You know, out in the working world, paying taxes and nonsense like that, and um, so I, I would catch it from time to time, and it was interesting enough for me to go, "Oh, that's a, a neat thing to do." Because I didn't get into G two that much. I didn't really, I didn't really appreciate G two just rebranding the same episodes over again with some weird CGI transitions. That didn't do anything for me, but it was. When I saw Beast Wars, I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. I could I could get behind that. And I did not appreciate Beast Wars at all until I started collecting again. So I couldn't care less. And then now with Kingdom coming out, I'm like, oh, my God. I just, it's like fired up this whole love for Beast Wars that I didn't realize I had. So I'm a, I'm a newbie to that. And um, I, I, don't, I don't mind admitting that. Um, Cowboys of Moo Mesa. I do remember that. Uh, Exo Squad. Yeah, guys, keep keep commenting your 90s cartoons. I'm loving this. Oh, Batman yeah, Beyond. Or even, uh, you can ask us a question. We often will field questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, for, for sure. Um, we're, do you yeah, know what we, we haven't done? What oh, haven't we done? Um, toy highlights of last year. Oh yeah, twelve. All right. So I've literally just looked over and thought, "Oh, I've put those there for a reason. Why have I done that?" See, we we veered off again. So, guys, you start getting your questions ready. If you have anything uh, you want to talk about that we're not already talking about or whatever, just ask it away in the in the chat. There's hard to keep up with the chat, but I'm trying. 
I'm not one to put super chats, but it definitely makes I will do some so. show and tell. Aha. So. And now, one thing we wanted to talk about was toy highlights of last year with Rudy <laughs> Zazu. <laughs> so, just, just after Christmas, I did my, I want to say top five, it was like a top three toys of the year and an honorable mention and a wild card. But there were a couple of toys that didn't make it. And one of them was this. If I get that in shot. So well, this that, is, is the... this is Super 7 just before they lost the He-Man license. But this bad boy glows in the dark. That looks amazing. I love glow in the dark toys. Yeah, so do I. It, it's, it was a, a return to glory. Like, I didn't have He-Man figures as a kid. Um, and I don't really know why. I just I never gravitated to getting them. I loved watching the show. But, um, yeah, I just... So this is my first experience of them. And it's pretty much this... a carbon copy. But, yeah, that was that's a toy highlight of last year that sadly didn't make it into my top five. Yeah, I have more the Super the 7 that. normal version of that. It was in the Japanese-style box. Oh, man, I love that packaging. It, yeah, I, I wanted I, to get I a skeleton. Skeletor, um, yeah, I left Skeletor in the packaging because I love it so much. Um, but, yeah, I've got the He-Man. And, yeah, those are those are awesome. I found those as a, at a comic shop yeah at a comic shop i found those sitting on the shelf and i was like i love that packaging it was so great looking with the super over the top japanese writing yeah i often say my i was gonna say reviews i don't do reviews i literally just put a, a toy in front of the camera and say it's awesome um i always say that the box is an integral part of the toy experience whether it's a good sure. box or a bad box because it invokes either feeling of if it's a bad box then you just think why am i paying x amount of money for a packaging that you know i don't want and then you're happier to throw it away in some ways and then when you get an incredible box you know just like the, the fantastic four toy biz inspired one um, or something like fans project glacial lord that's just the the thought processes there and those those japanese inspired he-Man boxes or Masters of the Universe boxes are something else. If no one knows, this is what he's talking about, what we're talking about. So it was, they were packaged. Go full screen. Like this. Yeah. Such great packaging. And I, I'm not an embossed collector, but there's something to be said about. Uh, the it's packaging, that, right? I mean, it's, it's got that it's beautiful like a, mix of kanji and matte painted artwork. So good. Look at that you skeleton. You see the figure. Man. Yeah, look at that skeleton is fire. Like the the cross, the iron cross here that is on the packaging. It's it's all well thought out. Very good. Great. I might great add that packaging. to my um, my wish list. Actually, I don't have a skeleton. Like Hordak is my, my go to villain when it comes to Masters of the Universe, but I do I have a soft spot for Skeletor. He has the you don't have a Skeletor lights. at all? No. Oh, we gotta fix that. We gotta fix that. We gotta do something about that. Um Magnum Prime said will ask, what's the toy reboot reboot that hasn't happened for you in the way that you wanted it? Oh, so it could be a reboot that happened, just one that Maybe we're not as happy with. Hmm. I don't know. I'm, I've been pretty blessed with the lines that have gotten rebooted. Um, man. Well, one that hasn't happened at all that I want to happen is mask. I often think sure. about, do I want mask rebooted or not? And do you know what? I don't. I want it to stay as what it is. I don't want it to be in some ways tainted. I know that sounds really pedantic and over the top, but it's it's now kind of kept in that bubble of time. It's and it's never been 
overly rebooted. You know, we got a Matt Tracker on, was it a few years ago in that Comic-Con exclusive? Yes. But um, I don't want it to be rebooted. Brad wants mass I want I want Hasbro to dip into the archives and get it out of their kind of kennel archives and yeah I would like it. at least Do you know what the way the way they're reissuing the retro Joes I would like that to happen for mask because uh, the toy the the vehicles still hold up you you oh, redo those right. vehicles just the way they are they yeah. still hold up What's I don't I think they probably can't re-release those vehicles because they're actual licensed Sure. Well, they wouldn't have had the license, but they, they are real, actual vehicles. It's a Camaro. Yeah, that's The Norg isn't actually a Camaro. The Shark is a, a Porsche Jeep. 959, a yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but, I mean, they literally could. They could re-release the exact same thing. And I'm just looking back at the Rhino now. Still a fan. Uh, Ninja Bill is still in here. I, I can never say this enough. Ninja Bill, thank you for that Rhino. It is still one of my favorite things I have in the collection, and that is completely because you were kind enough to send it to me. Fantastic, and I am eternally grateful. It is awesome. In terms of reboots, I'm not exactly disappointed with G.I. Joe Classified. There's, like, there's some that they have absolutely nailed. There's others that I'm not fussed on. It's not that I'm disappointed in it. I just want them to bring out sunbow colored figures. Yeah. So I like the sculpts, like Snake Eyes looks cool. I like the way that they've done Duke and Scarlet, but I want to see them in their screen colors. Yeah, I could totally see that. And I know that they recently announced that they're going to go darker colors for theirs, which is good. I'm glad they're doing that. I won't rebuy them, but going forward, it'll be nice. Um, I the think retro that's two three years down the pipeline classified it's it's not going to go it, it's it's sold ridiculously well you can't even get them like you have to pre-order them in the UK you can't just go and get them yeah. and even if you try the, the retro them line does a better job of colors colors and and uh, uniform the retro line is much better looking as far as nostalgia for me than the classified line quick shout out to Mark Nall, uh, buddy. I just uh, mentioned you on Instagram. You left me the kindest comment I've ever read. And I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, I, I posted on Instagram. He said that I was uh, his Bob Ross. I think that's just the nicest thing anyone could say. So thank you for that. Um, that that's a compliment. God, I right? love Bob Ross. And, and well, I say, I say it's a compliment for, he could hate Bob Ross. That would really be terrible. <laughs> He despite he could not stand Bob Ross, and he was like, "Oh God, you're like Bob Ross." So I'm I'm taking it as a compliment. Absolutely, That's how it's going to be. But uh, yeah, and you know, we're getting micro machines again. So there's so many great uh, reissues, reboots, relaunches of toys from the '90s and '80s. That's uh, geez, Lone Dragon said he got five of the new his tanks on clearance. That's awesome. I just got I got one. I only wanted one. Oh well, thank you anyway, Mark. No, I really do appreciate it. Um, so yeah, that that's uh, I think that's probably I would agree with that. The GI Joe classified as much as I enjoy it, um, I would have definitely enjoyed it more if they were more. Um, Sunbow themed. I, I think that's, that's, that's that, fair. Do you know what? That's me only being picky. Like, that's how I collect, though. Like, I don't need to complete any toy line. I just cherry pick. When a, a property gets so big, I just cherry pick out of it. There's so much stuff in Star Wars I don't like that I just leave it behind. I just get the ones I want. There's so much stuff in Transformers that I detest. Um, so I just get the ones that I want. And it's the same goes with G.I. Joe. I just want it quicker. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. line's ready to, you know, it's ready to be filled out now. They've gained new fans. They've been loyal to um, existing fans. They've brought something new with this, like, new updated styling. They've, 
they've tested the water and now it's they're ready to send more out what well, i am ready yeah, the, to receive repaints. the most disappointing thing they did with that was that horrible video game god it was trash good lord um ugly wretch mentioned visionaries absolutely uh and i may i may have heard a rumor that we're going to get some visionaries at least in some way uh, maybe i'm making that up but i feel like i heard that we were going to get some visionaries. i know we're getting third-party centurions i can't remember the name of the company that's doing it but we've gotten some um mock-ups of what those are going to be i think seven inches those look really good um I'm excited for Mattel's Masterverse. They're six inch, six or seven inch He-Man. Probably going to go along with the upcoming cartoon. Um, let's see. Are we considering Captain Power as the great 80s? Well, not a cartoon, but a kid show. I'd love a reboot of that. Captain Power reboot. That would be good. So we didn't get Captain Power here in the UK. No, really? No. Wow. Yeah. That's I I, that's I first learned about it about ten years ago. Yeah, there was a couple of cartoons that I just I, we just didn't get, and it was only through watching YouTube and finding like-minded, obsessive toy and cartoon lovers like myself that um, I found out about Captain Power. Yeah, got no interest in it, good. sadly. Really good. Yeah, C Captain Power was fun. I uh, reboots. I'm surprised. I'm really surprised in this day and age that we haven't gotten a um, Captain Planet reboot. As much attention as there is on uh, the, the 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 climate change, plant, and plants and trees and stuff to the world. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised that Ted Turner's crazy butt hadn't fired that idea back up. But uh, which was. Oh, really? That was a child of his. That whole concept was just his baby and a way to get kids to not to give a hoot and not pollute. But um, that, that I'm really shocked that we haven't gotten a Captain Captain Planet reboot. On YouTube, there was a fan made Captain Planet movie trailer. Did you ever see that? I did. This completely like a adult orient or yeah. much more dark version. That was, that was fun. That was great. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Um, I guess we're in line to get a, another power Rangers reboot is supposedly in the works. Did I, I think I read that somebody's picked up um, the power Rangers license. Well, they're doing a co uh, collaboration with Hasbro. Is it, is it super seven as well? I think it could be Super yes, 7. Yes, that, that Super 7 did leak uh, Power Rangers, so they, which is really funny because Hasbro still has mm -hmm. the the rights to it. But I guess it's it's all rights are weird, like the way they, yeah, they yeah. work. But they're, they're you can have rights to it's very different. Inch. Yeah, you can have rights to 6-inch figures, then you can have rights to 7-inch figures. Yeah, uh, hyper-articulated 9-inch yeah. figures. Like the way Funko Pops work. Like I, I learned this mm -hmm. recently, like, the reason I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure the reason you can't get a fun, like all the Marvel Funko Pops are bobbleheads. They're all springy bobbleheads, but other Funko Pops are not. And that's because Funko couldn't get the rights to action figures, which is what a pop would be considered, but they yeah. could get the rights to bobbleheads. So they could do Marvel as long as they had a spring in their neck but they couldn't do Marvel with just a figure. Um, at least in not in that size. Now I think some of the larger ones aren't bobbleheads because they're like 12 inch figures or whatever. So it's the licensing is just a nightmare. Uh, Ionicus is here. Thanks for coming in. Um, PPR is <laughs> here. Thanks for coming in, Jason. PPR is here. Yeah. We got some folks coming. Uh, it's just a, I got to start doing stuff at six o'clock. Apparently, this is the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's the time. With the, our UK friends uh, can get a hold of uh, Patriot Prime real quick. Um, aren't are you doing something with Bird the Stormtrooper tonight, or is that tomorrow? I don't want to. I want to make sure we're not stepping over somebody, but because I want to watch you and Bert. But I think that's tomorrow. Uh, 
leave a little chat there to let us know. I think it's tomorrow, though. Um, what else? Where are we at? Lord have mercy, it's been an hour. It doesn't feel like it. I know. I didn't, I just, I didn't realize it was an hour. I, I thought this thing would no be way. like half an hour, 40 minutes. We're, and then we're in a whole hour. No way that's going to happen. We both are better than that. Uh, I can't even... Never mind. I was about to say something that would be taken the wrong way um, to other to other folks that have been on, on the show before. Um, let's see. Where were we? I get so crossed up with you. Got to take notes. Um... <laughs> We did the 90s, Valiverse. I may have some news coming up with Valiverse soon. So I'm not putting that out there yet, but just keep an eye on the channel. Something Valiverse oriented may be coming soon. Delmas Dugan, thank you, sir, very much. Uh, <laughs> he's He's been, uh, Delmas, good friend, has been bugging me on uh, Instagram, I say bugging, I, I mean that lightly, uh, that he is certain that I'm going to get this $450 Thunder Tank, uh, so much so that he said he's going to start a GoFundMe to make sure I get it, which I'm fine with, go for that. And um, uh, when are you going to pre-order that new Thunder Tank? Um, I, don't, I, I don't think I am, Delmas don't think I am. I just, it's hard for me to want to throw that kind of change it's down. A lot. Do I you just, know what? It's a lot. I don't think, I don't think I've ever bought a toy um, in that sort of price range ever. Not in one most, go. Not in one go. I think the most expensive thing I got, this is a, a while back, 2012, I bought Mackie Toys um, Green Giant, their version of Devastator. And that was a uh, maybe two hundred and eighty, but then you're getting six robots, right? Exactly, and you know this this big guy right here wasn't even that much, mm -hmm. you know. It, it, given it's like basically a KO of a third party, oversized like mad, but you know. It's... Don't get me wrong that that Thunder Tank looks ridiculous, and then they've obviously done it for fans. You know the the way that you can fit two people in the cockpit there's obviously going to be yeah. opening Ridiculous. workable okay, so it, pieces if so you look at what they did with cast uh, castle gray skull it's it's hmm. they're not just chucking it out there it's going to yeah. justify that price for sure but um, and i get it i mean they i mean i, I read brian's uh, whole he 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 made this whole big comment on the, the controversy of the price and he's basically saying that you know, in order to do something like this, it's going to be expensive. It's just the cost of making a vehicle is so much more than making a playset. You know, the playset is pretty static. There's a lot more. I get all that. I'm, I'm not saying that the value isn't there. I, I would never say it's hard for me to say something is too expensive for everyone, but it can be too expensive for me personally. And it, like I would never, if somebody did get it, I would I wouldn't tell tell them they're stupid for spending it. It's their money, buy whatever you want. I so Patriot Prime, your live stream is tonight. What time is it? PPR two. Uh, go ahead. I think PPR and Bert are going. Is it two? Uh, two p oh, two a.m. UK time. Whatever oh, that is. Two eight. Do the math. Eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So nine p.m. on the East Coast. I'm over here doing poor man's math because I'm an idiot. There's a reason I'm on YouTube and not solving the world's problems one math problem at a time. Uh, so thank you again, Delmas. I do appreciate that. That that means a lot. Um, let's see. Uh, Mark says he fights for, for himself spending 20 bucks. Yeah, like 20 or $30 toys, I go in and out of my shopping cart 50 times before I buy it. Um, Oh, good. T7 said that Super 7 does payment programs. That is, that's very good. That's a nice way to do that. Uh, There's a couple of toys. websites in the UK that offer like payment plans and it's, it's, it's so worthwhile. And obviously yeah, big bank sure. toy store have been doing that for yeah. years and years, haven't they? They just, you fill that cart up and then when it's ready to go, you, you go. I think that's a brilliant, brilliant idea. I know Sideshow Collectibles does it. They do their own uh, payment, payment thing. Like a, not a financing thing, you just pay it off mm -hmm. over time, which I think is phenomenal. Uh, I, I was love going to do collectible that. toys. 
Oh, well, I, I had pre-ordered their Amazing Spider-Man, the newer Amazing Spider-Man with the uh, the web, the, the honeycomb web that showed up in um, Blacklight or IR Light or whatever. Mm-hmm. I had to cancel that. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't carry that pre-order through. I hated that. Lost 25 bucks in the process, but Ooh. I, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Uh, Patriot Prime says it is tonight. It is, I believe it is 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern, and it is on Bert the Stormtroopers channel. So everyone that is here at 9 p.m. if you're free, 9 p.m. Eastern, go watch Bert the Stormtrooper um, on his channel, and you'll see Bert and PPR. Um, Ionicus, $100 action figures are above my pay grade. Completely understandable. Absolutely understandable. Everybody's got a limit. Do you, do you have a limit? Do you have something that you just say you won't do? You won't go over? Um, I, I I don't know if I'd go over a hundred pounds for a toy. It, it's got to be something very special. Um, I draw the line at at that, I guess. Um, only because I've I've bought toys around that um that price that have been phenomenal. Um. Let me go grab one. And I can I can explain it sure, better. Sure. Yeah, I, I I don't disagree. Uh, I I think my limit is. I'm talking to you guys in chat now. Uh, I think my limit is more about value. Like if the if the price value um, meets, I, I'm okay. I was just saying to the guys in chat that I, for me it's 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 not necessarily a price limit, although I'm sure there is one. It's a value limit. Like mm-hmm. one, I have to have the money free. It cannot put me in any kind of bind whatsoever. Yeah. And that's whether it's a $10 figure or a $500 figure. I don't, it, however that goes, but the value has to be there. I've got to be able to see that like, Oh, is that $150? Does I do I feel like it's worth what I'm getting? And if the answer is no, then I won't get it. It's like, have I got 30, 30 pounds to, to spend on a toy? Yes, I have. What is that 30 pounds going to get me? Is it going right. to get me an action figure for 20 and then 10 pounds towards something else a bit later? Or do I put that 30 towards something else for another month and then I'm building it up and then I can get, you know, a Storm Collectibles big action figure for 60 or 65. You know, I've, I've spent 60 65 quid on a street fighter 2 action figure because i had the money i wanted it I, i'd watch reviews i believed that it was well worth it and it was it's one of the best toys i own um but again that's to some people 65 quid for an action figure is high um but when you're looking at seven and a half eight inches of well-designed um toys then yes you can go to that but as i said i spent a hundred on oh, a one sixtieth scale uh macross vf1s and that's a hell of a lot of toy for 100 you know three modes it's well made it's like a masterpiece but um that's that's a hundred pound toy the I've been looking at because of any Sardo excuse Noonspy. to get that on the screen as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, my buddy Sardo News by 82, uh, whose link will also be in the description below, uh, is uh, he's been getting a lot of soul of Chigokin, or as I like to call it, the soul of Choka Chicken. Yeah. Um, and they're very tempting, very pricey. They're out of what I normally would buy a figure for, but I'm the one I am most tempted to get is a figure that I liked the least as a kid. And that's the uh, vehicle team Voltron. Um, I didn't like it as a kid because I wanted the tiger, the lion team. And I, I got the vehicle team instead for Christmas one year. So I was very disappointed, such a bratty little idiot, but I have this great memory of uh, sitting on the couch and there's a photo I have somewhere. I wish I could find it. I would post it up, but it's a photo of me on the couch beside my granddad, who my grandpa, I worshiped that man. He was fantastic. I was his youngest grandchild. So I was the pick of the litter. 
You know, we, we just got along so well, so many good memories of him. And I would, I would spend the, I would spend the money on the vehicle team in order to feel like I had a bit of that memory again for without a doubt, the value of that is, is there. Um, and I would, pop it up on the shelf probably not in here i'd probably put it in the living room with some other toys that i have just so i could see it all the time because I, I cannot look at that figure old or new and not remember sitting on the couch next to my grandpa playing with that thing just completely pissed off that i didn't have the the lion the lion team but i will get that i will have that figure eventually somehow for sure maybe the golden rule is don't don't get yourself in debt don't put your life in jeopardy oh. don't put your whatever your your personal life in in jeopardy for buying a two a toy that's perhaps too expensive for you at that time but i think that goes with anything right if whatever you enjoy doing as a hobby or yeah sometimes not even as a hobby if it if it i think at that point it we laugh about it being a plastic crack addiction but the uh once it becomes an addiction that can if you if you if you're paying if you're buying a new transformer instead of paying your power bill, might be time to go to the hip hip hypnotherapist and mm -hmm. get that wiped clean. To re bit. rethink your check yourself before you wreck yourself. Chickety, check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> you might find yourself by yourself. I don't know. I just go, <laughs> which is true. But uh, so we've we've gone on for about an hour and seventeen minutes. We've gotten mm -hmm. a few questions from chat, which uh, while we start to close out, we can go ahead and ask if there's any more in there. Again, in about one hour 45, be sure to go over to Bert the Stormtroopers channel and hang out with uh, Bert and PPR, Bert the Stormtroopers first live stream. So make sure to watch you that. You can always switch uh, over to Enput and the Tales of Teletran who are now live. Oh, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. It's always an enjoyable show. Yes. Uh, I, Everyone, we have both, everyone, we've your, both been on that show, haven't we? Yes. Your homework is to leave here as soon as we say goodbye and go raid uh, Tales from Teletran on Input's channel. Just to, as, as soon as we say goodbye here, um, just all bum rush input and <laughs> hit the like button. I, it would be funny if I just said everybody go there and uh, just hit the, the thumbs down, just, every, just 35 thumbs down just for the just for the fun of it. Don't do that. Um, Curtis says he just left tails. We're all going to go back over there. Um, tell Bert not to be nervous. He'll be fine. Yeah, do you know what? It just, just chat. Do you know what the most interesting ones are when you just chat, when you shoot the breeze, that's let it be yeah. free and natural. That's what people want to hear. That's what I want to yeah, hear. Bert. And then Bert, the chat yeah. help you out. If you do get a little bit nervous, look at the chat and there'll be a question and you just, Answer it. And plus, he's got you, Jason, PPR. I've gotten to know Bert a little bit over the past year, a little more through Patriot Prime. And I can tell you, there's one thing he doesn't have a problem doing, and that's talking. And he always has something fun to say. So, it's you know, it's already – he'll be fine, and you guys will kick it. And I'll, 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 I'll be there in the chat rooting you guys on. Um, so, anything you want to add to this? Always fun live stream with Rudy Zizou before we go. Mr. Zizou. Funnest uh, name on the internet, by the way. Absolutely the funnest name to say. Zizou. Wrong. I love it. Oh, I thought you meant my, my, my channel name. No, <laughs> it, it, people do ask where it <laughs> People do ask where it comes from all the time. It's, it is from a French descent, but is uh, from a Wes Anderson movie. The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. But yes, uh, I just want to say thanks to everybody in the chat. Um, my thanks to you for coming on board for another convention. To everyone that contributed in our convention today, from the content creators to people chatting in all the live chats, to people commenting, to subscribing, to checking out all of our channels. It's it's made this one hell of a incredible day through tough times of COVID. For sure. COVID's not going to stand in our way. That's what the theme song says every time I sing it now. Um, again, I want to reiterate what uh, Rudy said. 
Thanks everyone in chat for coming to hang out. You guys always make it worthwhile. Otherwise we could do this over a phone call and um, lose an internet bill. But uh, uh, thanks to everyone. I cannot possibly name everyone that uh, was involved today in the uh, toys, figures, and robots virtual convention, but you can go over to Rudy Zizu's channel, subscribe to him if you haven't, and then look at the, timeline there to see everyone that was involved and then just you've got plenty of stuff to watch and i promise you it's entertaining it's genuinely entertaining stuff you will laugh and make sure that you have the live chat turned on so that you can read what everybody was chatting about while it happened because funny stuff happens in there and uh watch watch the videos and um subscribe to me if you hadn't subscribe to rudy uh, and just be good guys if, if you if you can't do good to someone, at least do everything in your power not to do them harm. That's all I ask. And uh, we'll all be a little better off for it. And Rudy, thank you for putting this whole thing together because it was a brilliant idea, uh, no matter the circumstance that it had to come out of. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm glad you asked me to, to play along. It was a lot of fun. Always love hanging out and talking to you guys. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate each and every one of you. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. Always play. This is Cato and Rudy Zazu signing out. See you around like a donut.